I'm lying in bed with my handheld, just having a listen to 2 metres and 70 centimetres. Now, what does that have to do with this video? Well, if you apply some of the principles in it, you may be able to get better results from your handheld without an antenna connection. Being able to get better results with your handheld transceiver in bed is one potential application of a passive repeater. Keep watching and learn more about this interesting technique. You may even be able to build it today with parts you have around the shack. Passive repeaters are quite interesting. Now picture this landscape. You've got a repeater, beacon or other transmitter just here. You are here and because of this hill you're not able to receive the transmission from here. So the idea of a passive repeater is let us supposing there is a pole on top of the hill and then there's a beam that's pointing towards this transmitter, beacon, repeater, or whatever. And then that beam is connected via some feed line to another beam, and that's pointing towards you, in your direction. Now, if this is set up right, the passive repeater, which has no amplifiers, it's just two beams connected via some feed line, will give you an increased signal because of the um, some of the signal being picked up by the beam and fed through to the other beam pointing straight at you. And this will work on both transmit and receive in both directions. Some people put these up in the bush on a hill where you could be pointing towards the main TV station and then a second antenna pointing towards you and that apparently improved reception. If you are only interested in reception then there's the potential to put a amplifier, maybe a masthead amplifier, maybe a booster, I don't know, uh, I haven't actually tried this but yeah, that could provide a bit of extra gain, or at least overcome the loss in the feed line. Supposing a different situation, you're indoors, you're in a location that you can't get much on your handheld transceiver. Let us suppose that outside you have a beam, then a feed line going inside, and another beam, and here is your handheld transceiver or receiver. Now you should be able to receive signals via this setup more than with just the handheld transceiver inside. There's no amplifiers, no transmitters, nothing at all, just the two antennas with as much gain as possible connected via some feed line which is as short as possible that lessens the loss therefore you don't need any sort of license to put this up you can put it up anywhere maybe even in a remote area where there's no power source but bear in, in mind that the more gain there is the more effective so if you've got a high gain antenna preferably at both ends then that will be better than if you're just using dipoles at both ends in fact in the latter it might hardly make a difference at all. You may even have Yagi's suitable to try this at home. You might already have a beam up on a, on a mast and then maybe another Yagi you only use for portable operating. Well, why not plug your portable Yagi into the feed line of your home station Yagi and down at ground level or indoors See if you can get a better reception on your handheld or portable transceiver with this setup compared to when it's disconnected. Let's give it a shot. In this case, I'll be using a horizontally polarized Yagi, 
pointing at a beacon out towards Geelong, some distance from Melbourne. And I'll just be here in the courtyard with the FT817 with just the rubber duck antenna, which I can't normally receive that beacon just on its own. But with this passive repeater, I may be able to. There's the beam pointing at the Geelong beacon on two metres. Right here is my portable four element Yagi on two metres that I sometimes use portable. That's connected with the similar beam up on the mast. Now here I have my FT817. I'm tuned to 144530, which is the beacon frequency here on two metres. The four element Yagi is spawning straight at me. You might have just heard the ID. I'll just move towards the beam and you can hear it getting stronger. This isn't a fluke, I'll just disconnect the beam and you'll hear the effect on the signal. The signal dropped quite dramatically and you can hardly hear it. Just to prove it again, I'll go inside and connect it. I did a test on 70 centimeters with this six element Yagi and handheld transceiver. There are two repeaters I was able to get with this setup compared to with just the handheld indoors. However, the outside 70 centimeter antenna I was using had little gain and wasn't very high. So I think the performance would be better with higher gain antennas at both ends. So that's our look at passive repeaters. Now this particular one, it just showed the concept worked. It's possibly not very practical, although I did try it with a dipole instead of a beam and it did work, but the range was even less. Now, if you had a bigger beam or better still, maybe you're trying it on UHF on 70 centimeters, where you can have a beam with more elements and more gain then it might be a more workable concept. What you could potentially do with this concept is you could connect a beam, especially on 70 centimeters, where I think it would work better than on two meters because you can get more gain from the beam on that band. If you connect that up to your main station antenna, then you could be lying in bed on your handheld and be getting into repeaters that you wouldn't be able to get without this passive repeater. It might only add maybe 3 dB, 6 dB, maybe not very much at all, but it may be enough if a repeater is just marginal on the handheld. Remember, the more gain there is in both antennas, 
and the least feedline loss, then the better results you'll get. That's our look at passive repeaters. There's quite a bit about them on the web, so have a look at some of the links in the video description to learn more about them. If you try this, please let me know in the comments below, because I think this technique is simple, cheap, but many amateurs don't know about it.